Melanie here from Partners in Fire, and today we're going to talk about GO arbitrage, which means moving to save money. So I was in to geo arbitrage before I even knew there was a word for it, right? I was living in LA and I realized that living in LA was too expensive to be sustainable. There was no freaking way I was ever gonna be able to achieve financial independence if I stayed in Los Angeles. And that's sad because I love Los Angeles. I love living there, there was so much to do, but reaching financial independence was more important to me. So I decided to move to a lower cost of living area. So I sold my house in LA and I bought a house in Savannah, Georgia. And even that wasn't cheap enough for me. So I moved from Savannah up to the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. And now I am saving tons of money because I do not have a mortgage and I live in one of the lowest cost of living areas in the country. So in this video, we're gonna talk all about moving to save money. We're gonna help you figure out if that's something that will help you reach your financial goals too. We're gonna to help you figure out if doing something similar will help you save money, but we're also gonna discuss some of the drawbacks as well. So let's dive in. First, what is geo-arbitrage, right? It's a huge word, it's complex. Um, it's a big old word for a super simple concept, which is basically moving to save money. That's it, that's what geo-arbitrage means. And the reason that you have to move to save money is because housing is generally the number one expense for most people. So if you move from Los Angeles where housing prices are who knows what right now to middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, you are going to save a ton of money on that huge expense. All right, so let's dive into the advantages of TGO arbitrage. Okay, biggest benefit is the lower cost of living. You can save tons and tons and tons of money on housing if you move from a high cost of living area to a low cost of living area. And it's not just the housing expenses either. There's a lot of things that are lower in different states. For example, uh, taxes are lower in Pennsylvania than they are in California, uh, and some of the goods and products that you can buy are lower as well. Uh, another huge advantage is if you want to be a homeowner, the home prices are out of reach in some of these high cost of living areas. I was looking up the average cost of living, the average home prices in some of these areas. And in Los Angeles, it's still $570,000 for an average home. And you know what? That was before this huge, huge housing spike increase that just happened in 2021. They don't have the average numbers on that yet, so I couldn't find them. But man, it's still nearly $600,000 without that. Imagine what it is now. Whew. You would need you would need an income of $95,000 per year to be able to afford that according to the experts. And I say that's what the experts say because they do say that, that your home should cost about a third of your take home income and experts will say that you can't afford a house uh, based on that price, $95,000. But I still think that is tough, you know, uh, with your take home pay, with taxes, with all your other costs taken into consideration, that might be a really tight budget if you're making $95,000 and you have a $570,000 mortgage. I don't really think that's affordable. Some people might be able to do it, but I think you need even more money to be able to afford a home at that price. In comparison, you can buy a decent house in Savannah for less than $300,000. That is so much more affordable, especially if you're making the same amount of money, $95,000. Also, there are still places in the United States where you can buy a home for under $100,000. My home in Pennsylvania was only $52,000. It was a fixer upper, but there are a lot of other homes in this area that are still under $100,000, even with that, that boom of 2021. And also there's other places too, Indiana, Ohio, Missouri, the central United States, there's still good deals to be had on real estate if you want to move to a lower cost of living area. Another huge advantage is the taxes. So there's actually two states where you can move to that you don't actually even have to pay state income taxes. That's Texas and Florida. A lot of people when they retire or can re work remotely, they geo arbitrage to those states to avoid those taxes altogether. But you also have to consider tax rates. At one point, I wanted to move back to my hometown of Chicago, but the property taxes in Cook County, which is the county of Chicago, are the highest in the country. Well, one of them, I don't know, but they're super freaking high. The tax rate there is over 7%. That's even more than Los Angeles, which was at 6%. Now, granted, the home prices are cheaper in Chicago, so 7% of $300,000 is less than 6% of $600,000, right? That's true. I mean, I'm no math genius, but I'm pretty sure that's true. 
So these are things to take into consideration. So something else that has been an advantage to me, which I didn't consider before I moved, was the crowds. These lower cost of living areas tend to have a lot less people. And that's good and bad, right? It's good because I can go to any restaurant I want. I can go to my Olive Garden or the whatever restaurant down the street that's family owned or wherever. And I don't even have to like wait to be seated anymore. Tops, I have to wait like 20 or 30 minutes and that's fine, that's normal. But in LA, if I wanted to go to these restaurants, I was looking at like an hour to two hour wait times, right? So, I mean, that, that's been fun, that's been different. Uh, another thing is the traffic. Savannah traffic was nothing compared to Los Angeles traffic. And where I live now, it's kind of like a rural area. And sometimes you get the one lane roads and you get the tractors on the road. So there's a little bit of a backup, but generally it's a lot easier to get around these areas than it ever was in the massive metropolis of Los Angeles. So I know you might be thinking that like, you're gonna miss out on a ton of stuff if you move to a smaller location, right? There's so many things that to do and see in Los Angeles and maybe you don't wanna give that up, but there are mid-tier cities that are just as freaking lively. I didn't miss out on anything except for really good Asian food in Savannah. Savannah has a great nightlife. It's got a street filled with bars and restaurants and all these fun things. It has beaches nearby with Tybee Island. There's so much to do in Savannah. It, I never felt like I was missing anything by moving, except for my friends, obviously. There's so much to do in Savannah that I didn't feel like I was missing out by having left Los Angeles. Now, where I live now is a little bit different. There's less to do, but I still am two hours away from Philadelphia. I'm an hour away from Harrisburg. I live in a mountain area where I can go hiking wherever I want. So there are pros and cons to each area that you live in. And I really think that living in the less crowded areas has been an advantage. All these advantages have been freaking awesome for me. And I really think that most people will agree that when they move, they will find a lower cost, it's easier to buy houses, and the less crowds will make them happier overall. But that doesn't mean that there are not drawbacks. There are. And we talked about, so we kind of hit on some of them. The biggest drawback is jobs. There are not a lot of jobs where I live. I was really fortunate to be able to get in the industry that I had worked in in Los Angeles and Savannah, where I am now. So I was able to move and still make a similar income to what I was making in Savannah, which is freaking awesome. And I know most people don't have that option. So the jobs is a problem. But with a lot of companies moving to remote work, a lot more people are looking into geo arbitrage as a way to save money. If your job was stationed in New York City and now you work from home all the time, why not move a few hours away from the city to save a ton of money? It's very reasonable, right? You don't have to go into the city, why stay there? I know, I know a lot of people are returning to the office and that's not ideal for everybody, but it is still an option. And also, just because there are fewer jobs doesn't mean there aren't any jobs, right? There are some jobs in this region if you want to move to a lower cost of living area, research the region, research the jobs available in that region and get yourself qualified to get one of those jobs. And remember that even if you aren't making quite as much, that's okay because you're paying way less to live. So I took a pay cut to move to Savannah. I took a $10,000 a year pay cut to move from Los Angeles to Savannah. That's a lot of money, but overall, but overall, since my cost of living was so much lower, I actually took home more money. I was able to save more, invest more, and pay off debt more because I moved, because I took that $10,000 a year pay cut. So keep that in mind. Another thing that you can do is achieve financial independence first, right? A lot of people move to high cost of living areas like Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, and get these super high paying jobs in tech and software and IT and all that stuff. And they live as cheaply as possible while they're there and they save up as much freaking money as possible. And then they quit their job, move off to Montana and live the rest of their life in bliss. So that is an option as well. And doing this helps you ensure that your retirement savings will last. So biggest to me, the biggest to me, disadvantage of geo-arbitrage is moving away from your friends and family. Now, I moved from Chicago to Los Angeles to start my adult life, and it was okay for me to leave family then. I was ready to strike out on my own and do my own thing, and it was great, it was a blast. But the friends I met in Los Angeles 
became my family. And I spent 10 years developing those relationships and hanging out with these people and they became my family and I love them so much. And my sister even moved to Los Angeles to, to live with me. We lived in Los Angeles together for 10 years and we became closer as a result. And she's one of my best friends now and I love her so much. So moving away from her and from my adopted family in LA was one of the hardest things that I ever had to do. Um, but the cool thing is there's the internet, there's telephones, there's Facebook Messenger, there's planes that we can go visit. I talk to my best friend twice a week on Facebook. I talk to my sister all the time on text. And I visit Los Angeles at least once a year. And my friends come out to wherever I am to visit me as well. So you can make that work. It's sad that you're not there all the time, but you can still make it work. Bigger issue, though, is child care. I decided to be child free, and that was my decision. But a lot of people decide to have children. And the cost of childcare is freaking, don't even get me started, it's insane, it's stupid, and we can do better, but that's how it is right now. So I know that some people need to stay where they are. You need to stay where, where you're located because you have family and you have a support structure there to help you take care of the kids. If you can pass your kids to grandma while you go work and that saves you thousands of dollars a year, then maybe moving to save money will not save you money because then you'll have to figure out childcare once you get there. However, once your kids are old enough to not need that type of care, or once you hit retirement, you can still move to save money. So keep that in mind. Keep it as a plan in the back of your head that might work out for you later. The stupidest drawback to moving to save money is the moving part. Moving sucks. Like seriously, it's horrible. Not only does it suck though, it's time consuming and you gotta move all these boxes and you have to pack all your stuff up, but it's freaking expensive right? I did two cross-country moves in like the span of two years and my god that cost me a lot of money. The packing up, the cleaning, the transferring services, the downsizing, all of that stuff is such a huge freaking hassle and then on top of it I had to sell houses or find renters or do all of that stuff which is a huge hassle as well. So I know that that's stressful and time consuming and then the actual cost of moving it cost me like two thousand dollars each time and I didn't even hire movers. I got those uh, U-Pack things or what's it called? Oh, I got those pod things where like they drop off the container ship at my house and I load it up and then they drop it at my new house. But that still costs two thousand dollars because it's a cross country move and that's going to be expensive. And then if you're you gotta pay, you gotta buy a new house or you have to pay security deposits and first month's rent and all of that stuff that comes into moving. So I get it. That part super blows. So if you're going to move to save money, make sure you have. A ton of money available in savings to help you actually move because that's going to get expensive. So the term geo-arbitrage was actually coined when people started moving to international countries to save money. So it's expats who are moving to Belize and Thailand and places like that who started talking about geo-arbitrage and that's what made it mainstream and that's actually my goal someday once uh, I'm all financially independent and I've gotten my fill of the United States. I want to go live in Cambodia and Thailand and all those fun countries. So. If that's for you, that's something to consider. You can go move to another country that has a way lower cost of living than the United States, and that's a solid retirement plan that lots of people are doing. The cool thing is you don't necessarily have to be retired now to take advantage of these. There are people who live in Belize and freelance. There are people who live in Thailand and work remotely for a software company in San Diego. The, with globalism, I know people talk bad about globalism, but man, globalism has opened so many opportunities for us. The sky is the limit. You can do anything you want from wherever you want, and that's freaking amazing. And that's what GeoArbitrage truly really is about. So, are you ready? Are you ready to move and save a boatload of money? All right, it's not as easy. You can't just like up and go. It, it takes a lot of planning. First, you need to figure out whether you want to go pre or post retirement, right? Because if you're going to go before you retire, you need a plan for jobs and how you're going to buy a house and how you're going to pay for everything. If you go after you retire, you probably have all your money set and you don't have to worry about those things. Next, next, you need to decide where you want to go. Do you want to go to Costa Rica? Do you want to go to Pennsylvania? Do you want to go to Thailand? The world is full of options and opportunity. So. You might want to move to a lower cost of living area that's closer to some of your family members in the United States. Or you might want to move someplace in Europe or Asia so you can travel the world. But you need to know where you want to go because then you need to see what the cost of living in that area is and decide about how much that will cost you. And then you can make a plan to get there. If you will be moving prior to retirement, you need to have a plan for work. Does the area that you want to move in have jobs available? Is there a remote work available that you can get? 
Would you be willing to take a pay cut and make less money? Can you pick up a side hustle as a way to supplement your income? And if you can't find a job, what are you gonna do about health insurance? These are all really important things to consider before you decide to move. So the last thing you need to do before you get ready to move to save money is make sure your finances are in order. Start saving now. Start investing now. Start budgeting now. The more you're able to save and invest and budget and pay off debt now while you're still working your job in your high cost of living area, the easier your transition will be. And hey, maybe if you put an extra year in, then you don't even need to worry about jobs wherever you move. Win-win, right? Only you can decide whether geo arbitrage is actually the right move for you. It was right for me because I wanted to decrease my spending as much as reasonably possible. As much as humanly possible, really. Because I want to achieve financial independence. I want to achieve financial independence as soon as possible. And if that means I have to live in Podell, Pennsylvania for a few years, so be it. Because after these few years are over, I will be living in my RV, living my dream life, traveling around. But your dream life is probably different than mine. If your dream life includes having roots and having family and having all your loved ones around, then maybe geo arbitrage is not right for you. If your family is from Los Angeles and you want to be near them, and that's important to you, then geo arbitrage is probably not the right move for you. And that's fine. We all have different goals and dreams and desires. And that's really what fire is all about, right? Being able to live our dream life. Only you can decide whether geo arbitrage is right for you. It was right for me because I wanted to save as much freaking money as humanely possible. <laughs> because financial independence is my number one goal. I've also been fortunate enough to find high paying jobs in these lower cost of living areas. So that's important as well to make sure that you have the skills to be able to move to save money if you're not ready to retire yet. It's also right for me because roots aren't really that important to me. Like, I don't, I'm not planning having kids. I don't need family support around. I like technology to talk to family and friends and I'm happy with visits once or twice a year. But you, your situation might be different. Maybe family is the most important thing to you and you want grandkids all around you and all of your family and friends that you've known since you were little. And that's perfectly fine. But that means that geo arbitrage might not be the right move for you. The beauty of financial independence movement and of passion fire specifically is that it's all about what you want and what you like and what your goals are. But hopefully after this video and learning some of the pros and cons of geo arbitrage, you can figure out what the right decision for you is. Some of you may have already taken the plunge and moved to a lower cost of living area. And if you do, I want to hear from you. Leave comments. Tell me what it's like. Tell me where you live. Tell me if you enjoyed it. Tell me if you regret it. Give everybody else any extra tips that you might have had when you did it. And if you like this video and want to know more about the financial independence movement and specifically Passion Fire, which is living your best life, make sure you smash that subscribe button because we are going to give tons of videos on how to save money, how to achieve a financial independence, how to live your dreams, and we're going to have a ton of fun along the way.